This is the home of democracy in the US, the Capitol building where men and women represent what the Constitution refers to as we the people. Democracy in the United States is under attack. Both Democrats and Republicans see it and both say that they are the ones defending it. We are the ones trying to save our democracy. Very simple. Very simple. Very simple. The danger to democracy comes from the radical left, not from the right. Not from the right. I will not stand by and watch the most fundamental freedom in this country, the freedom to vote and have your vote counted and be taken from you and the American people. Look, as your president, I will defend our democracy with every fiber of my being, and I'm asking every American to join me. On the surface, Joe Biden's Democrats and the Trump camp of Republicans may be going into these elections to contest for seats here in Congress behind me, but this video will show that the upcoming midterm elections are truly a referendum on democracy, with grave consequences for the United States and beyond. We'll look at how Donald Trump is trying to take control of America's election system, how he and his camp have revised and expanded plans to influence election results, and how this cause is attracting candidates who feel legitimized not by voters, but by a higher power. God is with us. He has chosen me, and he has chosen you. And we'll hear from poll workers who are getting ready to defend US democracy. It really cuts right into the heart of the foundation of this country. The 2020 attack on US democracy peaked right here. This was rhetoric turned into action. Trump supporters tried but failed to stop Joe Biden rightfully being declared president. Those hours of physical attack at the heart of America's democracy were a terrible shock to the nation. While what happened here is still under investigation, the power struggle has moved on. It's all about sowing doubt in the election system. If enough people repeat a lie enough times, it begins to stick. And Donald Trump makes sure that the legend of the big steel stays alive. In a recent post on his Truth Social Network, Trump still demands to be declared the rightful president. He calls for a new election to be held immediately as a, quote, minimal solution. This is the first time in US history that a sitting president refused to accept election defeat. And that's despite some 50 lawsuits on the claims of election fraud. So what actually happened to all those cases? Even if the Trump campaign complained that it did not have its day in court, there have been post-election reviews in each of the six battleground states that could have made a difference. And in each one of those instances, there was no credible evidence of fraud produced by the Trump campaign or his supporters. In fact, top Republican attorneys were so worried about Trump's election denial that they conducted their own investigation. Their report concluded that the elections were lost, not stolen, warning fellow Republicans that if the American people lose trust that our elections are free and fair, we will lose our democracy. But Trump's camp still makes these unfounded claims about the elections, sowing doubt about the well-established fact that there simply was no evidence of fraud has become a campaign strategy, and it's well on the way to becoming a mainstream narrative in the Republican camp. At this Republican fundraiser in Miami, top conservatives meet to talk strategy and campaign funding. The fraud narrative is on everybody's lips. 
Lake Masters is working the room. The Republicans' rising star from Arizona is running for Senate. He has Donald Trump's backing, but that comes at a price. He has to stick with the big steel narrative. This is, shouldn't be a partisan issue. Everybody should want free and fair elections where it's transparent, where you have bipartisan poll workers, poll observers, making sure there's no shenanigans. So who got elected in the last presidential election? Joe Biden's in the White House, and unfortunately we're all suffering because of that. Few here are concerned with the question of evidence. That includes Trump's greatest rival within the Republican Party. Welcome, America's governor, the 46th governor of Florida and future president of the United States, Ron DeSantis. The Republicans' new strongman may want to challenge Trump, but he too feeds the stolen election narrative. Thank you so much. Please, please, take your seat. It was corrupt as hell, and the state of Florida, if you do that here, you're going to jail for it, so we're not going to put up with it. Many people here are convinced by the election fraud story, even though Florida investigations found no evidence to back it up. Why, if everyone is, is talking about and there is a lot of uh, evidence, the court, why they don't want to take that in, in, in evidence? Why they don't want to make a case? They, they, they probably, they're afraid of the establishment. I do believe that there is, there's massive amounts of voter fraud. I believe that uh, President Trump should have won the presidency. The picture Trump and a large part of the Republicans have painted of a corrupted American democracy is starting to stick. It's a fresco. I developed the technique myself to get stucco to stick to a canvas, and then I painted it while it was wet. And, uh, you know, just like him, it's a timeless classic of a style. And uh, it's beautiful, and the colors represent, you know, Trump loves gold. Donald Trump has also expanded his technique. He's not only backing election deniers for Congress and spreading the lie among voters, he's specifically focusing on helping loyalists become election officials who make local decisions about results. Right now, the fight for democracy here in the United States is all about the election system. Arguably, democracy dies unless voters can be sure that their vote will be counted accurately. And as poll workers in the highly contested state of Pennsylvania here prepare for the upcoming midterms, former U.S. President Donald Trump still denies that he ever lost an election. So the state of Vice President Mike Pence was the man who made that loss official when he certified the national results in 2020. He could only do that because officials in every state had done the same in their region, despite pressure from the White House. Joseph R. Biden, Jr. of the state of Delaware has received 306 votes. Donald J. Trump of the state of Florida has received 232 votes. Georgia's Republican Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger famously stood his ground People when President Donald state. Trump personally called to tell him the numbers he wanted to see certified and to tell him that he had won. We don't agree that you have won. We don't, we, I didn't agree about the 200,000 number that you mentioned. We have all the votes we need. You know, we won the state. If you took, these are the most minimal numbers, the numbers that I gave you. Those are numbers that are certified, your absentee ballots sent to vacant addresses, your, your out-of-state voters, 4,925. You know, when you add them up, it's many more times, it's many times the 11,779 number. Having failed to change the Secretary of State's minds in 2020, Trump started focusing on changing the Secretaries of State. The six battleground states where Trump alleged election fraud in 2020 are among the 27 states where the Republicans are sending election deniers into races for key positions this year. If elected, they will be in place to approve or reject the results of the next presidential elections in 2024. Let's look at Arizona. Mark Fincham is the Republican candidate for Secretary of State there. Fincham, a declared election denier, 
criticised Vice President Mike Pence for calling in the National Guard on January 6th. Mike Pence seized power over an existing president. He was not president. If elected, Fincham would be in charge of organizing the next presidential election in Arizona. In that, he would be working with the governor. Trump's favorite for that position also managed to secure the Republican candidacy. One of the hottest politicians in this world, I think, at this moment, and I think it's gonna be that way for a long time. She's incredible. Gary, we'll start with you. You've called Joe Biden an illegitimate president. What does that mean? He lost the election and he shouldn't be in the White House. We had a corrupt election. I'd actually like to ask everybody on this stage if they would agree we had a corrupt stolen election. Raise your hand. Lake has repeatedly made it clear that she won't take another election no to Trump for an answer calling on her followers to defend what she says is the Almighty's choice for governor. This fight before us proves to us that God is with us. He has chosen me, and he has chosen you. And I don't believe for one second that God makes mistakes. And a third election denier is running to become Arizona's attorney general. Arizona could end up with election deniers overseeing, certifying, and potentially challenging election results in time for the next presidential elections. That's the strategy the Trump camp has put in place across the country. We have people who hate our country running our government. Jim is a winner. He's incredible. This matters for the next presidential elections, but also for countless local races. In the US, elections are held at every level of society. Not just politicians, also many judges, county clerks, and top law enforcement officials like sheriffs are elected. So destroying trust in the process that goes into selecting them also damages trust in the courts and police. This is downtown Philadelphia and the city's convention center. Right here, there's music playing, people are walking about, everything is back to normal. But two years ago, during the presidential elections, it was the postal ballots counted in the hall behind me that led to tumultuous scenes outside. Hundreds of Trump supporters showed up calling for an end to the count. And the poll workers, who were accused of manipulation back then, also intimidated and threatened, are already asking themselves how bad things will get this time. We're at the election commissioner's warehouse on the outskirts of town. This time, the count will take place here, mostly for security reasons. It's been, very, it's been a very difficult time for me personally, uh, just regard, with regard to how I live my life. Uh, my circle's a lot smaller, and I take more care and more caution uh, when I decide where I'm going and what I'm going to do. You know, certainly my mom, for example, you know, she's proud. Her, mom, her daughter is the chairwoman of the Philadelphia Board of Elections. People ask her what her daughter does for a living, and she says she works for the city. On election night, these machines will count postal ballots. Observers from all parties will be able to watch from just a few feet away. It's the same setup as last time, but last time it wasn't enough to convince the demonstrators outside. Detroit saw similar scenes, yet here too the top election official has stayed on despite threats and intimidation. Personally, um, I had to uh, file for and take classes for um, a gun license so that I can carry because I was uh, approached uh, leaving my home, <laughs> going for a walk. Um, and uh, uh, it's, it's just made, it's really saddened me that uh, people uh, uh, take democracy and their right to vote so lightly that they are willing enough to put out lies you know, family feels like, you know what, Janice, you need to let this go. Uh, it is not worth it. Um, 
and, and you know, friends and loved ones have a tendency to say that. But then there are colleagues that I work with um, that say things like, well, if you quit, they win. And um, we don't want them to win. American democracy has passed its stress test for now. Donald Trump failed to overturn the 2020 presidential elections. There are checks and balances to this thing. Even if you're Secretary of State, even if you're President of the United States, as we saw in Donald Trump, you can't overthrow our, uh, our democracy because um, it's too important to us as, a, uh, as citizens of the United States. But now he and his strategists are trying to sow distrust in the election process effectively turning skeptical Americans into weapons against their own democracy. Trump's target is the US, but any impact he makes would also be a blow to democracies around the world, and those are already under pressure. The assumption at the end of the Cold War that democracy would continue to spread proved wrong. Today, democracy is back down to 1989 levels. And the flip side of that is, over the past 10 years alone, the proportion of people living in autocracies has jumped from just under half to 70%. It's not only Trump and, and, and the way he's taken the Republican Party and with the evangelicals and so on. Orban in Hungary became this nationalist, reactionary and, and, and suddenly Christian um, and liars with that. You have Erdogan in Turkey, Muslim, reactionary, nationalist. You have uh, Modi in India with a Hindu nationalist that it's reactionary. So it's not only the United States, but Naturally, being a major power, a superpower in the world, the weight of the United States is, 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 is enormous. Democracy puts the power in the hands of the people. Attempts are underway to undermine trust in that process. Some Trump Republicans are even preparing to reject election results that don't hand them more power. These midterm elections are seeing the next attack on American democracy. The biggest stress test yet will be the upcoming presidential elections in 2024. In a world increasingly tipping towards autocracy, whether American democracy remains strong will have an impact on everybody's chances around the world to live in a land of the free.